All right, welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. My name is Tyler Kesky. I'll be your host tonight. On the show, we have Jake Russell, a libertarian activist out of LL County. And we also have Joshua Smith, who is currently on LNC and is running for the state chair here in California. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the uh, more recent event of the uh, political assassination that happened over in Poland. Um, recently, there was a Polish mayor uh, who was killed in public. Um, and uh, Josh, you want to comment a little bit about that? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I, so I wasn't super familiar with this, this case. I knew that there was a, a mayor, I believe from Gantz is, is the name uh, in Poland, the name of the small yeah. city. And uh, he was actually, it was actually a charity fundraiser benefit. And um, he was stabbed on stage right after a children's hospital uh, fundraiser. And in, in the heart and in the stomach and died. And so I, I really started looking more into this this case. And um, it seems that there there's a very big split there right now. You know, Poland is a is actually a really extreme right wing it is actually, country yeah. currently. And I, I wasn't aware of that. And I guess there's a lot of anti Semitism floating around and all that stuff. And and uh, this mayor was actually elected and was a, a, a leader of the progressive movement there. Um, you know, really big on LGBTQ rights, really big mm-hmm. on, on uh, uh, you know, the social aspect of the economy. And, and uh, the man who stabbed him, actually, he blamed him for have being incarcerated for, I think it was a two-year stint the guy did for robbery or something like that. But he blamed, he blamed this guy and the progressives for, for um, his stint in prison. And so, yeah, he went up on stage in front of all these people and stabbed him right in the heart and the stomach. The guy died a day later. And it's a... You know, brutal, brutal case. Uh, but they're, now they're, you know, they've raised a bunch of money for, you know, a, a new charity in, in his yeah, name and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, so. that's, that's really tragic. Uh, I mean, I'm not a big fan of progressives, but it, uh, getting killed over, I mean, that, that's that's really just what way too far. That's that's some radical extremism. Right. Uh, I mean, people say that our politics is pretty radical. I mean, you look at countries like that, or have a, politicians getting killed. I mean, we always talk about how we want to kill politicians, but none of us really carry it out too often. Right. Well, I think that's just the current state of politics. You know, it's it's become such a chess beating team sport, uh, and that's everywhere in the world. You know, even the even the United States is getting that way. You know, we, we don't have these assassinations going on currently. Well, although we're probably about ready to. I mean, I, yeah, I'm not saying I, it's I, never going to happen. I think at this point, it's it start. It's going to start off in Poland. It's going to go spread through Europe. Well, we have the, um, the, the you know the stuff going on in France right now too. You know, yeah. the yellow vest riots and protests. That's still going and they're on. bringing out machine guns. Yeah. Um, and, and while the, the protesters are are, are defenseless, I mean, I mean that's another another uh, you know reason to have the uh, Second Amendment. Well, yeah. I mean, really, are all the protesters defenseless? You know, they're kind of there. They're kind of starting talking to begin with, and it depending on where you're talking and what's being protested about, it really can kind of get violent. And kind of, you know, yeah. Um, so it's really kind of debatable on whether it's a peaceful protest and if they should continue to be allowed to do that, or if it's really changed into something completely different. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I mean, from what I see, it does. It, if they're wearing yellow vests and they're organized like that, it, it, it seems moderately peaceful. Um, I, I don't want to say it's completely peaceful. Protests never really peaceful, but. Uh, compared to a lot, like you know, a lot of the Antifa protests and, and Black Lives Matter protests we have here in America, there's pretty civil. But they're bringing out, uh, you know, riot gear. They're bringing out guns uh, against people who don't have guns. We're here in the U.S. Uh, no, those Fr- those French no, those French riots are not. <laughs> they're not peaceful. Uh, they they have been burning cars and flipping cars over, and they've they brought a guillotine out to the. the oh yeah, the yeah, you're yeah. you are right. Yeah, 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 I do remember that now actually. It's it's great. It's I, I, look. Their list of demands is basically half asking for more government, which is the problem, anyways. <laughs> uh, but you know, it started over a gas tax, you know, and and so I feel like that maybe there is some hope <laughs> for some of yeah. these social. Yeah, I, I mean, as countries. much as we, we like to hate on the French, I mean, they want the same things that we want. They yeah. want they want uh, liberty, and they did help us uh, win the Revolutionary War. I mean, that trickles down in some way. Yeah, absolutely, and and then you know, I think so. You, this this thing in, in Poland. Uh, with the politician assassinated, that's just a total, you know, 
exact thing that's going on all around the country right now, and, and it's just brutal tribal politics, and it's coming it's coming to a head where people are fed up with intrusive government on one side, and on the other side they want more government, and people are willing to kill for it at this point, and I think that's, that's just the state of, of politics these days. Yeah, I mean, you go back 50 years ago, is uh, you can have you, you talk to someone like, oh, I voted for this guy, and then you go, oh, well, I don't think he's great, but that, that's I respect that. Well, now today that conversation doesn't exist. It, it's uh, Oh, I voted for this guy. Like, oh, I hate you now. I mean, yeah. at this point, you're going to get stabbed. I remember when uh, they're, they're in the uh, 2016 election. Um, after we, we were wearing our Gary Johnson shirts, actually, and we went to a watch event. As soon as we walk out, everyone was pissed off that Trump won. They blamed the third parties for us, and they were throwing drinks and oh, food at us. Well, that's whatever side wins. Always, you know, they, they, they're always applaud their their you know their horse in the race that won because if they're tribal and then the other side blames everyone else for their loss it's never <laughs> it's never hey we ran hillary clinton and we lost that's why we lost. yeah yeah you don't no, take, go take responsibility was, for your own it, mistakes it was 4.2 percent of the vote that gary johnson took that lost and, and we yeah. and we libertarians actually accepted our our, our loss and yeah. stuff and you just see us getting upset it's like yeah we knew we we're gonna lose the majority <laughs> of the libertarian party was like oh my god we got over four percent this is the greatest day of my life this is great <laughs> You know, we we almost got that magic five percent <laughs> number. Oh, we were so close, you know. And and it's yeah, it's just it's funny. It's that that constant tribal politics. Man. It's it's weird when I'm, when I'm talking to people uh, that are not familiar with the libertarian politics, and and uh, I'm so they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we just moved we just moved up a bunch of support. We went up two percent, and they're like, that's not very much, man. <laughs> you you don't understand what that means to us. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of people, you know, you're either Democrat or Republican, right? So to move up, I mean, it's it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. And it would be really nice to kind of push that agenda a little bit more. But, you know, how how is the Libertarian Party really going to do that without the support that they need? Right. Um, mm. A lot of people have very libertarian views. I've met people that say they're Democrat or Republican and they have libertarian views. Right. So, I mean, really, how how can you carry on a conversation and basically address the issue and kind of bring them into a more mutual side yeah it's all about speaking to your audience at the end yeah. of the day you know you got to know who you're talking to right you know well speaking of uh some anti-libertarian views uh we have uh here in california we have uh governor galvin newstrom Ga who, gavin newsom Gal I, don't know, no, that, I actually like that you don't know how to say his name i, I, I intentionally couldn't mispronounce his name i'm not even gonna I, i'm if you're watching, uh, Gavin, Gavin uh, Ninstrom um, <laughs> pass a new uh, tax on drinking water. I, I, I mean, how does that make someone like you you feel? Has it passed it? Well, he's I mean, sorry, he's sorry he's intending, intending, to, intending to pass. Yeah, he's, in, he's, he's intending to. Okay, so, I mean, really, our drinking water is already being paid for, right? I mean, you, you, you get a bill once a month to pay for your water pretty much no matter where you live. And now he's going to increase the taxes on that. Um I mean, I don't understand where he thinks he can really take the money out, and it, it just makes no sense. I thought the left argument was that water was a human right. Water kind of is <laughs> you can't a make, human you can't, right. You can't make like, money off of it. What's going on? At, at I mean, you're, there, time, people are getting upset over over uh, the, what, um, the water bottle of water bottle of water companies trying to sell bottled water, but they're not getting upset over uh, you know taxes on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. I live in the country. I like the country. Not big on the city. Come down every now and then. Why can't I gather my own rainwater? Stuff like that. Why? Because now I'm going to have to pay you more taxes. The, so pub the public works don't, don't control rainwater. Right, right. So they can't tax so you. They, but it's illegal but in like El Dorado County and places like that. To, to collect rainwater. To collect mm -hmm. rainwater. Because they, can't tax, you. they can't tax you. Why do I have to pay for something that's falling from the sky? Like, no. <laughs> Sorry. That, that's kind of just a, a human right. I mean, all around the world, people collect rainwater. It's not an uncommon thing. Well, this gets even worse. This this tax, okay, so this tax is G Gilvin Ninstrom? Yeah, I forget how to say it. I mean, uh, Gav Gavin. Galvin? I think it's Gavin. Gavin. Yeah, whatever. Gavin. Anyway, <laughs> so this tax itself is, is his brainchild because he found that 360,000 people, I think that, that's the number, don't quote me on that, uh, 360,000 people in California don't have access to clean drinking water. Now, the problem with that is it would take probably a million dollars to fix that, that issue. And right now, California has a 50, no, $45 billion dollar uh, tax or uh, uh, budget sur surplus. Yeah, exactly. We have a surplus. surplus. I mean, it's at the point where they can give us 
everyone five hundred dollars right now. They give us all five hundred dollar check, and we'll be good. Absolutely. And I told you, I told you at the beginning, at the beginning of this show, I can do an entire show on get given Gilstrom, Ga- right? So Ga- the problem, Gasly Newstrom. <laughs> the problem with Gab. So the problem with the problem with this is is that in California, anytime anybody finds any kind of problem whatsoever, their first their first reaction is we need a new tax. Yeah, I mean, you guys remember that thing where how they were talking about tax and the, uh, the the text messages? I mean, thankfully that didn't didn't pass and that got shot down. Oh, wow. uh, but you guys remember that? Yeah. That, that was crazy. And, and like even people on, uh, that are normally for, for taxes are like, well, let's let's not do that one. <laughs> yeah, Gavin Gavin Newstrom, Newstrom Newsom Gavin. So his name's Gavin. Name some. Yeah, name some. Anyways, he will not be happy. He, look, I've told people this a million times. Uh, governor Moonbeam, the current the the prior governor. Uh, he was bad. Newsom is Governor Moonbeam on steroids and, and meth. <laughs> he wants to. He will not be happy until he has taxed us at seventy percent of what we make. You know what? House. As much as I, I, I hated Governor Brown, I, I do appreciate that he was at least uh, the most fiscally conservative out of Democrats. I mean, uh, uh, compared to uh, like people sure. like, like him, sure. This is, is completely blown out of the water. We, people are saying, well. Uh, you know, liberal policies are, are doing us great because look at California. Well, he didn't really implement the most. He implemented a lot of liberal policies, but not everything was completely liberal. The problem, so so Brown is is kind of a conundrum because he was backwards from other Democrats. They raise a bunch of taxes and then spend way more than they raise. He was kind of the opposite, except that he still raised a ton of taxes, mm-hmm. but he didn't spend it. He all. didn't spend it all. That's why we have the surplus. Newsom is going to spend it all. Yeah. One way or another. And he's going to spend it all, and he's going to ask for more. And he's going to ask for more. Okay, but how much do you want to bet that that tax is going to be passed? Everybody's just going to go through the ballot and be like, yep, yep, well, it's yep. A, it's and a bleeding then a couple issue. months later, they're going to be like, why am I paying more money for this? And it's funny, it's the way they word it, too. So the way, way a lot of these these bills are worded is they don't tell you it's, it's a tax. They tell you uh, fixed, whatever. They tell you what it's fixing. And then at the bottom, they'll tell you it's, a, it's an increase in tax. And then there was the uh, repeal of the gas tax. That was on the ballot uh, recently, and it, and it failed. But it, the way it was worded— It was ridiculous. It, 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 sa- it basically said um, cut road funding uh, so we're not able to repair like roads. It was right. worded in a way that was so biased because the people who, who write, write, write the uh, uh, proposal don't actually get to choose how it's worded in, right. in the ballot. And so it was the person who's writing the ballot was like, well, we don't want this to pass, so we're going to write it this They way. just did a poll about it. They just did a poll about that, that tax. And there was like a large percentage of the people who voted to increase the gas tax that thought they voted exactly. to, to, to repeal it. And, and so, you know, and that's, that's that bureaucratic red it, tape that they like to wrap around your head. Even my brother had, had told me. My brother, um, I think he does a he does a mail in ballot, and he said he had checked, uh, I think, in favor for it, and, and then I, I I told him I kind of warned him, and he was like, oh, I just checked in favor, so he actually went to like get some white out or something like that to change his, his ballot before he mailed it in, and everything. He didn't realize what he was vote, was voting for. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 strange, and, and and Gavin, he's gonna do everything he can to take more money out of your pocket and give it to the state because that's how he's always been. I mean, and and let's get down to brass tacks. This is the guy that wanted to ban. Pitbulls. I was about to say California. that. I, I'm glad you brought that. I was about to just bring that up. I, I was like, this is somebody who, uh, what when he was, well, I think he was mayor of San Francisco. Yeah. Was that correct? Yeah. And he he was 2005. Yeah. Yeah. And he was talking about like, like, oh, we don't own mountain lions, so you shouldn't own pit bulls and everything. And pit bull, I, it's almost along the lines of the Second Amendment. Like, I, I feel I have, I have a, a Second Amendment right to own pit bulls. I, I grew up around pit bulls. You know, I'm from Antioch. Everyone in Antioch's got a single, yeah, at least one pit bull. It's kind of how it works. My, my parents were yeah. breeding pit bulls for a while, actually. Friendliest, nice dogs ever. But uh, some people don't raise them right. And that's the kind of guy Gavin is. I mean, he wants to take everything he can from you that can protect you and so that he can dig deeper into your pocket. Take that's, your money, take yeah. your guns, take your pit bulls. I mean, what, what are we in left, left, left with here? Butter knives. We're get, we got butter knives left. Whoa, well, I mean, whoa. Well, you that's got a butter knife? <laughs> whoa, buddy. I, I was down in my <laughs> plastic down, fork here, you know. But you still got a butter knife? Oh, my goodness. I mean, look, 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 that's, that's an issue over at uh, England. I mean, you guys hear about how that over in England, they're trying to, they got like, cause you know how we have the gun buyback programs, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. In England, they have like the knife buyback programs because <laughs> they've already banned all the guns. So now they got to get rid of, rid of rid of the knives and, and they're, they're con- they have all these mass stabbings and everything. It's, 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 yeah. and their stabbings are way worse than our, our, our shootings and everything. Well, I was just, I was just reading some, some of the, uh, you know, the gun numbers earlier. And actually, like last year, there was 340 deaths by rifle. That's all rifles, not, not just, 
the scary <clears throat> assault rifle, oh, oh, yeah. which is really just, just a semi-automatic rifle. rifle. But right. all rifles. There was 300 deaths. All rifles. So that means there was five times more stabbing deaths in the United States than there were by a rifle, by the scary assault rifle. But yet we, we focus on the scary rifle because they know at the end of the day, the Second Amendment wasn't created to ward off uh, a robber. It was, it was to make sure that our government performs right. how we ask them to perform. And so, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's, that's what it is. And, and, you know, someday some people are going to wake up and realize that, I think. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a huge deterrent from... Uh, you know, the government from, you know, putting people of a certain race within a train. Right. You know, I, I mean, people always point to Trump, uh, how he's, uh, you know, has a bias against Muslims. I mean, they're protected by the, by the Second Amendment. Yeah, absolutely. Because they have weapons to defend them, so we're not rounding up Muslims. Uh, look, the Second Amendment and gun rights in general, it's not just a singular issue. It is it is human rights. It is LGBTQ rights. It is uh, minority rights. Yeah, know? and that's the thing is people are always pointing, like, oh, it's an outdated constitutional right. It's like, I, I mean, it's not just a constitutional right. It, 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 you're right. It is a human right. It's a human right. Uh, I, I legitimately believe you have a right to own a bare arm in any country, not even countries that, that outlaw it, which, by the way, the only country that's ever successfully outlawed it was North Korea, and even then there's an estimated 100,000 illegal right. firearms in North Korea. So. Let me ask you this. When, when, when the gazelle is being chased by the cheetah, right? Are you talking about Galvin? No, no. <laughs> Gil Gilvin, Gilvin, <laughs> Gazelvin, uh, Gazelvin. Uh, no, when the, when the when the gazelle is being chased by the by the cheetah, we don't say let's cut the the, the gazelle's hooves and horns off. Exactly. And then the, and then the cheetah won't attack them. No, we, we we say they need to use those to protect themselves, and that's the same that's the same way I look at guns. You know, we 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 can't cut off uh, the defense of of good people and expect bad people to stop attacking them. It doesn't work that way. Well, and I'm really glad you phrased it that way because there are thousands upon thousands of gun owners just in California. And all these laws are really directed towards people that have registered their guns. You know, a lot of people do hunting or sport shooting or whatever it may be. And they've paid their taxes on it. They've let everybody know, yeah, you know, hey, government, I basically own firearms. What are these laws actually doing? That's like these new buttstock laws and all this stuff. You can still fire a weapon just as fast just because you can't collapse your, your, your buttstock. Right. Now, if I'm going to go buy a rifle to commit some kind of crime, am I really going to care what buttstock is on it or the previous thing, which was like the bullet button? <laughs> like, you're going to walk up to some, you know, gangbanger, drug dealer, like, hey, Make sure to put that button on so when I'm, you know, taking pop shots, I, yeah, I want I to be California sure my, compliant. I want to be compliant. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. it doesn't work that way. It hurts It hurts good people and, and does absolutely nothing to bad people. And did you guys see how uh, when as soon as Trump kind of leaned more towards uh, banning the, uh, um, the bump, bump fire stocks, stocks yeah. uh, Vice, which is generally a very uh, left-leaning uh, media outlet, started taking the opposite approach and started almost coming from a more pro. I don't know if you guys saw that video or not, but they had a video. And it almost, I was waiting for like the anti, uh, the anti gun message, but they were just anti Trump. So they were like, oh, now we're for guns. <laughs> and then that's going back to our first issue. I mean, that's a, it's a tribal mentality. They don't care about the policies, they don't care about the people they hurt. What they care about is their team winning. And at the end of the day, when Trump wants to pull uh, our, our troops out of Syria, now all of a sudden the, the anti war left is no longer they're pro war now. <laughs> yeah, they're pro war. Though it's the pro. But war we need to have now. some war. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no no just kidding. We need to stay there and help. No, we need to take our people out and stop doing that. But that's it's a tribalistic mentality, and that's something that we're always going to deal with. And when Gavin, you know, you can look at Gavin Newsom's history right now and say, you know what, that guy's probably not good for human rights and individual rights, but he's on my team, so I'm going to vote for him. And it's right. an, it's an ugly thing, you know. The the guys. He's going to tax our drinking water. He's going to tax. He, he probably will find a way to try and tax our text messages. He's, you know, our gas taxes are going to go up because we got to fix the roads. How, how are you going to tax a text message? Like, like really, like so. Basically, AT and T is going to send in every yes. text message. Blah blah. That's what they do. They, just... they would they would go to the self, the service provider and say you have to you now have yeah. to <laughs> watch all of these text messages go out. Which is another thing they're going to be collecting that data all the time. Right. So they're going to know what you're doing. You that know. that goes against privacy, right? there yeah yeah which i think is one of our topics tonight right well you, right but <laughs> roll into that be, yeah. before you get into that okay going back to guns cannabis all right so california is all about you know cannabis and everything like that mm -hmm. which which is great 
Like, like yeah, I have no problems with anybody sitting on the front porch, back porch, smoking a joint. Cool. People have been doing it since time began. My big problem is, is okay, you smoke cannabis, so you can't have firearms. Well, what, what is that? I've got people walking around high on opium all day long. Yeah, and, Nick. You know, morphine and all this other garbage that's synthetic. That's actually like, oh, warning! You may have migraines. You may have, you know, whatever. Right. There's actually a lawsuit. Uh, I forget which state it was, but someone is uh, have in a, in a lawsuit. It's a doctor, actually. I, I want to say it's in yeah. Oklahoma, maybe, where he got um, he got his Second Amendment taken away because he was prescribed uh, a medical marijuana card in a medical marijuana state. And yeah, that just for having the card, you don't have to smoke it. You just have insane. the card. Insane. I don't look. I may or may not have at one point in my life smoked a joint. Maybe. Yeah, and, same here. Maybe. And maybe I can not. tell you that I did not want to go out and commit gun violence. I exactly. wanted to sit at home and eat Funyuns and watch <laughs> Family Guy. I mean, you if know. you're getting really crazy, you might call up your local pizza and be like, hey, bro, I need like five pizzas yeah. right now. Yeah. So it's and it's one of those things, but the, but the problem with the, the cannabis being underground or being legal is that, you know, we have been in a black market of cannabis since since they made it illegal, you know, 100 years ago or something, right? right. And and so now they're like, okay, we're gonna make it legal, but we're gonna tax the hell out of it. It's basically still illegal. Yeah, yeah, it's it's basically and 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 now we're gonna take your second amendment in order to do this. You know, okay, fine, we're going back to the black market. It was cheaper. Right. We got it faster. We didn't we didn't get taxed. We didn't get our Second Amendment taken. You know why? Why would I sit around and, and deal with the state when I can just go back to the black market where I've always got it from, anyways? Yeah, they're talking about destroying the black market. I mean, it, it, it didn't. It, the black market is doing well. Which I, I mean, I'm not against destroying the black market at this point. I mean, I, I feel that uh, we, we let's just keep it the way it is. Tell everyone just to buy it off the streets. Well, I mean, really, once again, they're they're saying, okay, we're going to try and destroy the black market, and what they have done is really increase the black market. Years ago, yeah, because now now you can own it and not get in trouble, so you feel more comfortable ent entering the black market. Well, right. I mean, you kind of got rid of that awkward drug dealer for some people, but I mean, yeah, yeah. okay. If you feel that awkward, don't talk to that person. It's right. kind of that simple. Now, I mean, they're taxing everything, so people are actually making more money off of the black market, and it's not actually going towards where it should be. And it just it just opened up a whole new world. Everybody's you know doing dabs now, doing oils now. And it's like the increase has just been crazy. Right. Well, let's call it, let's call it what it is. The only people who go to the cannabis dispensaries are people who think all laws are moral. I yeah. mean, that's, that's the truth. You know, they did right. they sat around for years while the rest of us were having fun, didn't touch the stuff, <laughs> right? And I didn't go to their parties. I promise you, I didn't go to their parties. Uh, and and they and they you know once it was legal and they were like, oh, I can go to the store and buy it now. They went and did it. My nine, my my grandmother who's seventy years old. You know, or 70, 75. She said, well, on my 90th birthday, I'm going to I'm gonna smoke a joint. <laughs> you know, and I said, I said, why, why wait? She's like, look, it's been illegal my whole life. And, I, and I'm just going to wait until I don't have anything. It's like, it, it was never immoral. You know, it was never yeah. like an immoral But it was thing. been brainwashed into people. The and law it, it, was immoral. The law was a, an immoral law that said, you can't do what you want to do with your own body. You know, and, and so... You know, it can be legal all day, but that black market is going to exist until they take the government hand out of the market. Okay, have you have you ever seen Reefer Madness? Oh, of course. Yeah, okay, you, you you know the the propaganda. You know, 40, 60 years ago, you know, oh, it's it's the devil's drug. Now all of a sudden, you're trying to say it's not the devil's drug because you can tax me for it? Like, no. Of course. No, I'm, I'm trying to decrease my taxes to the best of my ability. Look at all the other stuff they, they have that's legal that you can get prescribed by a doctor. You know, stuff that gives you long-term addiction issues, right. gives you, uh, you know, hepatic problems and brain issues and bone function issues. And, and this is stuff they're prescribing to you that's supposed to help you, you know. But the, the one thing that you know you can use, you know you're not going to get, you know, physically dependent on it. You know it's not going to send you to the hospital or hurt you. You might overeat. You might, you might eat too much in you that fridge. You know, that's that's a big it's, issue. It's not going to hurt you, but they but they know that they can't regulate it like they can big pharmaceutical industries. They just know because we can grow it in our backyard, in our garage, in a tent. Well, I mean, now they're trying to regulate it to the point where you can only have X amount of plants. They have to be indoors. And it's like, okay, you can I mean, anytime California uh, makes something legal, they got all these stipulations attached with it. It's right, like... Right. 
Like, like Did you really plants? make it legal? <laughs> six six well, plants? And that's I mean, the thing. And that's, I, I won't consider the cannabis legal until the day I, I go to Safeway and I see it on aisle 12. <laughs> and I see it on, there you I go. Know, I, would I be able to just pick it up from the shop and go to consider, self-check? No. So, I, don't, I don't want to go through and talk to somebody. I want to go through the self-check. Not even check. that. Not even that. <laughs> I, won't <laughs> consider, I won't consider cannabis legal until I can make a purchase on the street corner from another individual in front of a police officer and he can't do anything to me to, about it. There you go. But you cannot do it that right now. I, I will at least settle for buying it a safe way. <laughs> uh, hey, man. I, I'll, take it, I'll take it once. I like to take, in the words of Mr. Larry Sharp, I like to take it one step further. Hey, you know well, I mean? if I'm 12 years old, you know, selling you lemonade, might have some problems with taxes in California. Yeah, so I don't yeah, think the whole quarter have, deal ever is going to be We hear good. about lemonade stands getting shut down all the time. Lemonade is not legal. Lemonade is not legal. Lemonade is not legal. Especially if it's spiked with great, cannabis. In the great <laughs> social state of California. Lemonade is not legal, yeah, and, that, yeah. and that's the damn truth. You know, if, if I can't sell lemonade on my street corner to a thirsty jogger, it's not legal. It's not legal. So, anyways, yeah. Well, <clears throat> back back to bring, bring up some other issues here. Um, we talk about data security. Um, in the more recent light, uh, we had the uh, Facebook hearings and everything that were happening, and that brought a lot of attention towards data security. With, with companies now, private do private businesses have the right to, you know, data mine? Do they? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and it, and as long as they make it, you know, as long as they make it apparent to you that hey, if you sign up for our platform, we will use the information that you have to, you know, because because I mean, Mark Zuckerberg sat there and said in the hearings, we all we use the information for is to market to you better, basically, mostly. You know what I mean? And and they do. They sell it to to you know, organizations that want to market their product to you. I'm Have you okay read the contract for that? Yeah, absolutely. For No, for Facebook? Like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm going to download. Did you read the whole contract? No. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah, nobody no. reads the it's whole like contract. It's like long. It's like they do that on purpose, sure man. They They're like, no, no 17, 18-year-old person is going to sit around for 24 hours reading this no, damn contract. Well, what, high school friends. What's, what's your perspective, Vama? Do you, do you think they have the right, right to read? When, when they start selling everything, no. I mean, yeah, okay, I signed up for Facebook. I mean, I don't know anybody who doesn't have Facebook. I mean, if you want to do any kind of business anymore, it's on Facebook. If you want to, you know, talk to your family, who picks up a phone anymore? They're like, oh, selfie, you know? But, I mean, I really think it's gotten blown out of proportion where it's like, yeah, okay, I can, I can take yeah. all this information and basically I'm going to market it to you. But I mean, what's the third party marketing doing don't with sign it? Up for things it, yeah. like that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> don't sign up for don't it. Don't sign up for just it. Just don't sign up for it then. Those, but, are, those are some pretty interesting perspectives, guys. So uh, thank you guys for watching uh, Lift Your Counterpoint. We'll see you next week.